Hey, good morning team. Like I told you, I was gonna send you some small kind of video teachings, you know, snippets, whatever you wanna call it, regarding leadership. I know um, now with the development of Laredo, it's kind of hard because distance and jobs and work and you know, Heavenville, we've used to do this Wednesday night for, for two years, we did leadership training. And, and again, like I said in the text, what you see in Heavenville now is not, it just happened. It's been a lot of work and, and we need to replicate that in Laredo. So. We're going to start just with simple things, so, you know, I'm going to try to keep them short in time. Something you can sit, watch, and maybe review later. But, you know, everything we do in Hebron Bill, everything that we do is Faithway, not Hebron, but just Faithway, Faithway, Mexico. Um, our church down there is is based on just simple, simple principles. And the thing is, we're all in rhythm, we're all in sync. And Laredo, uh, we, we haven't talked a lot about it. You know, now that we have our weekly services, well, now we are formatting it into more like a church and of course you know we're going through some things we're going through some growing pains um and that's fine you know we will deal with that on sunday it will be great and i just want everybody to have the the right spirit because we're going to move forward but you know the difference between just uh church folk and leaders is that leaders have mature leaders have stepped them to a place where there's a bigger picture there's a bigger cause and by doing that you know what makes a leader is is that maturity you know how do you handle strife how do you handle your emotions how do you handle your own personal life your character and so forth so you know that's one of the things and i see this group the one that's you know everyone that's on this text group as as a leader and that means you know i see qualities in you i see you know characteristics in you and your personality that that tell me that you can handle some of these things because the church is going to grow the responsibilities are going to grow and and if we have a good solid foundation you know, it doesn't matter how big the church gets, you know, you're, you're not moved by size, you're not moved by anything else. So, you know, that's some of the things. So, you know, I know a lot of stuff has happened the last few weeks, but it's all under the blood. We're all humans. And like I say, Sunday, we're having this, this communion service. Very, very important for you to be there at 430. I know some of the questions about setup. Well, that's, that's Luis's department. You can contact him regarding the audio. And just a Quick note on that, you know, we do need to strive for excellence. We do need to strive to do things better. We do need to strive to start on time. And, you know, being on time is a big leadership point for me. It, it really shows character. And I want to encourage you, you know, to, regardless of where, what happens in the schedule, you know, for example, if Luis schedules you for set up at, you know, at 2.30, 3.30, whatever the time is, you, you need to be there at that time. You know, that's, that's part of that character and that integrity that, that I've learned over 25 years, you know, um, sometimes we can't nail the clock down to the minute, but, um, you know, even the service has to start on time. And I just think we all need to, to look at this as the, as the bigger cause. It's not nothing personal. And then we need to become experts of whatever we're doing. You know, if, if we're in the hospitality, if we're ushering, if we're on the audio, if we're a musician, you know, we, we have to strive for excellence. And I'd really like to see the, the Laredo service begin to, replicate, you know, what we're doing in Heavenville regarding the slides, the intros, um, the announcements, and so forth. You know, if we don't act like a church right now, when we're small, we're never going to be able to have a big church. That's just basically it. And we have to, we have to behave and carry our character and everything as if we had 300 people there next Sunday. It doesn't matter if we have three people or 300, we need to to run that with that that level of excellence. And I'm, I thank God some of you are stepping into leadership. We still need to define roles. And also, you know, some of these, these things that come with leadership is that, you know, one of the first characteristics of leadership is humility. It's not control because our model of leadership is always servant leadership. It's not, it's not a corporation type leadership because in a corporation, the CEO just tells you what you're supposed to do and that's it. In Christian leadership, Christ modeled it by being a servant. So just remember some of these things, you know, I just kind of like a quick video and I want to just give you the, the basic three points. We're going to build on it. Um, if I can do this every day, I will, I'm not going to promise you, but I will be sending this. I will be sending some things from Kerry Newhoff. He's a great guy that I learned from, um, Craig Rochelle. There's a lot of these guys out there that are doing it right. And I feed off them, read their books, you know, um, Brian Houston from Hillsong. I mean, there's just a lot of great resources because a leader never stops growing. You, you know, I've been doing this 25 years and I've been developing leaders on a lot of levels, you know, from pastoral organizations that I was ahead of to the local church. And sometimes, you know, what you guys see is the fruit of a lot of work and a lot of things that happen. 
And, it, you know, people walk into church and says, well, that thing just seems like a, a big family and everything just kind of flows and everything kind of comes together. And it's not just, it's not like that. There's a lot of um, logistics and work on people and character and, you know, personalities and all these things. So anyhow, just the basic three points that we're going to build on is Faithway is built on three primary things. And I'm just, and you, it's on our cards. It's, we've taught these things, but you can never stop teaching. I mean, first of all, of course, is, um, you know, our beliefs, our statement of faith. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. You know what it is and, and you know, what we believe. The second, the two, the two, three, and, and four points um, on this piece of paper, you know, the, the values, cultures, and systems are really one of the most important things that you guys need to learn and understand. That's why I sent that text. Spend time reading them. Um, you have the cards. If you don't have them, text me. I'll send you a picture. But we've talked about it there. But it's not just a little cute little thing that we do. Everything we do. And this gets in sync because as we grow, everything's going to have to come in sync. The life groups are going to have to come in sync with, with our format. From Hebronville, nothing that we're doing is independent in Laredo. It's, it is just a, a repeat. You know, it's a photocopy of, of the structures that we have in place in Hebronville. We have the same structure in Puebla. So number one, of course, is the values, you know, and, um, you know, what do we hold dear? What do we hold valuable as a church? And all of our leaders are required to hold these values. Number one, we engage the culture. We're not against the culture. We're not counterculture. We engage it with the good news. Um, we big value for me is I believe in empowering the potential of the people. That's what these videos are about. I, I know every one of you has a gift, and if you focus on your gift, you'll be able to grow it. If you lose focus and you start focusing on other people, then you know that's some that's a different dynamic, and and you don't grow, and nobody gets any benefit. So it's we just believe in that everyone has gifts and callings, and it's my job as a pastor to identify those and help you grow in them. I do believe in authentic relationships. I don't believe in, in just phony, fake things, you know, and I think as leaders, that's the first and foremost relationships that we need to build with each other. We are driven by compassion, not by religion and not by legalism. And I've kind of heard, you know, things, people come from different backgrounds, but there is no room for legalism and religion in anything we do, not in our church services, not in our life groups. That's why everything, everything's a system, everything's a curriculum based. Even the songs that we sing, you know, we're careful to pick that they, they, they hold true our eyes. We are driven by compassion, not by judgment, not by thinking that we're better than anybody. And of course, we're for all generations. We're, we're a church that will reach across, you know, from the children to the older people and understanding each generation. So and I'm going through these quicks because I really want to get just to, to three. It talks about our culture and that's the culture is what sets us apart. So our culture is a culture of honor. And I sent that scripture to you via text yesterday regarding that, you know, we are in honor of, that we honor God. We honor up, down, and all around. We honor God first and we honor down. We honor the babies in the nursery. We honor the old people. We honor the people that have. We honor the people that don't have. We don't make exceptions and we don't. We've never done that. And I think one of the things that we have to understand as leaders, we have to honor each other as leaders and respect each other and, and flow in this honor because that is one of the main points of our culture. And of course, there's others, what I'm not gonna expound on them because each one of them is almost a teaching in itself. We are a culture of worship. We believe in, in, in bringing the worship to God. We are a culture of giving, of generosity. We believe in, in, in you know, crazy giving, you know, putting it all out there. That's the way I've lived. And some of you live this way and I, and I thank you so much. And we're a culture of a relational culture. I value relationships way over membership and a culture of bringing and reaching. And that's one of the big points for Laredo. We have to be bringing and reaching out to people. And like I mentioned before, you know, it's, I even said it last night in, in Hebronville, you have to look, you know, have a kind of like a, this moment with God and say, you know, how many people are you bringing to the kingdom? You know, we've been doing this in September. And as I've said before, you know, if, if it, each family had spent time developing one family per month, one family per month, one person per month, I know our attendance would be much higher. So, you know, we have to consider these things that there is a cause, there was a price and there's a cause for this. And, and church growth is important because God, God is about numbers. We are here to bring the good news to people. We're not here to get people just saved so we can increase numbers, but we have something that God has entrusted us with. And so it's very, very important. And we, you guys have a couple days here, you know, it's Thursday today, Friday, Saturday, to really do everything within your power, your text messaging, your, your social media. I'm not talking just the church, you as a person reaching out to people, sharing a little bit about, 
you know, who Yoel is and why this service is significant. And, and then if you need to pick them up, you know, that's, that's the culture we have. And of course, all of you guys know we have a culture of volunteer. Everyone serves with passion. And we have the culture of life giving and everything we do is life giving. That's why I say we have to watch out what we teach in our life groups, what we teach from the pulpit, what we talk about with other people as, as we relate to Faithway. And one of the things I mentioned in the previous text group, now with all these crazy text groups, um, before we could get everybody in, in, in the same one was, you know, Faithway is centrally run, you know, and that means that any, I mean, anything that's done under the banner of Faithway, you know, you guys can hang out, do your own things, you know, it's not a cult, you do whatever you want to, but anything we, we tag as a church activity from, of course, a service, if we have coffee together under the church name, if a life group, anything, you know, if we do, you know, baby shower, quinceanera, that, that's under the church, it is, it, it has to be previously authorized because there's a rhythm here and by us to make sure that, and this is not a control thing, this is a life-giving thing, we just want to make sure what we do is producing these positive results. So like I said, I'm going super fast because I know everybody's time's limited and I wanted to keep this video at 15 minutes. I'm watching my clock as I record and I'm down to four minutes because I know everybody has 15 minutes to sit down. And, the, and the, the, a couple ones are systems. We have systems on how we do everything. These systems have been have been play, in place for 20 years. They've been adapted, they've been reformatted, but there is a system. There's nothing that Faithway Laredo is going to encounter that we're not already doing as a church. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel. If you are in a position of leadership, just talk to me or talk to one of our leaders or systems. And then there's structure, and we will talk about that later. You know, um, there's there's org charts. We, we handle org charts within the system, and once we establish the org chart of Laredo, it needs to be respected as such, and, and all our leaders have learned that we don't cross paths, we don't cross the lines that we've been our commission. We're all a team, we work together if possible. But once these org charts are set in place, um, that is the hierarchy, that's how it is managed, and that's how I can run an organization. And people will be under somebody, and somebody will be under somebody, and as a pastor, I always deal with the leader. I, I commission leaders, and an example is, you know, anything, I'll just use an example for Laredo, anything that has to do with audio, video, setup, some of the administration that's going on right now within the building, you know, that, that comes under Luis. And so when some people ask me, what, what, what do we do with this? I have to get handed over. You know, if you have questions about hospitality and ushering and, and some of these things, well, we have, you know, Kathy is overseeing these things. And so I'm just gonna, you know, I'll direct you to her and so forth and so on. Of course, I'm your pastor, I'm your friend, we're here for you. That has nothing to do with personal things and things that we need to, you know, deal among ourselves.